Hi, Adams. This is lesson five of our Middle Ages unit. And today's lesson focuses on the towns and villages that were um, existing in the Middle Ages. So here's our vocabulary for today's chapter. Fuel is a verb, and it means to give strength to or cause something to happen. A merchant is a noun, and it is someone who buys and sells things or the owner of a store. Emerge is a verb, to become known or come into existence. Thrive is a verb to grow and succeed. Hustle and bustle is a noun. And this is a phrase that means a great deal of activity and noise. Curfew is a noun, an order or law requiring people to be in their homes at a certain time, usually at night. Tavern is a noun, and this is a place where people can get drinks and a meal or sleep while they're traveling. An apprentice is a noun. This is a person who learns a skill or trade by working with a skilled craftsman for a period of time, usually for no pay. And advise is a verb, and this means to give a suggestion about how something should be done. So we are going to read chapter four, which is called Merchants, Markets, and Mud, Towns in the Middle Ages. Our big question for this chapter is, how did the growth of trade during the Middle Ages affect the way people lived? It is raining again. You stand in a puddle on the edge of a narrow street. You have just entered town through one of two gates. The gates are the only ways in and out of this walled town. Inside the walls, tiny townhouses stand side by side. As you move through the crowd, you spot rats scurrying about, feeding on discarded trash. Nearby, you hear the varied cries of people selling fruits, vegetables, eggs, and pies. It is market day, and people have set up their stalls in the town square. As you make your way through the muddy streets, you hear the sound of church bells. They ring out to sound the hour and to call people to church. You have just caught a glimpse of a town in Europe during the late Middle Ages. And this is metal workers' stall in a medieval market. Streets in medieval towns were often crowded and muddy. In the early part of the Middle Ages, most people lived in the countryside. Between the years of 1000 and 1350 CE, fueled by trade, towns began to grow. New jobs emerged, and as a result, more and more people left the countryside to live and work in towns. This is peasants farming in the countryside. With this growth in trade, an increased number of people became involved in commerce or business. As a result, a class of people were the, called the middle class grew in importance. Merchants and craftsmen were part of the middle class. Towns grew as the middle class created successful businesses and therefore jobs. Some merchants became rich and influential members of town communities. To protect their businesses, merchants established guilds in towns throughout Europe. Guilds were organizations made up of merchants. Guilds controlled wages as well as the price and quality of the goods the merchants sold. Merchants and artisans sold goods in town markets. Not only did merchants thrive, so too did skilled craftsmen such as carpenters, paper makers, glass makers, and blacksmiths. Skilled craftsmen were also important members of the town communities. They made and sold their goods in the towns in which they lived and worked. Just like merchants, skilled craftsmen protected their businesses by forming guilds. And here's some examples of different craftsmen. We've got a carpenter, an armorer, a tailor, and a tanner. Only skilled craftsmen were invited to join these guilds. Many years of training went into becoming a skilled craftsman. There was a certain pattern to daily life in towns in the Middle Ages. From Monday to Saturday, towns were busy with the hustle and bustle of street vendors, shopkeepers, craftsmen, and market sellers. Pickpockets and purse snatchers were afoot, too. Shops opened as early as 6 a.m. Most towns held markets two or three times a week. Local farmers sold produce and animals. And this is a town scene in medieval manuscript. Towns were not outside the control of the local lord. 
merchants and craftsmen usually paid lords in the form of money or goods. However, in exchange for money, oh. however, in exchange for money or goods, many lords granted towns special charters. The charters allowed wealthy and influential townspeople to make the the charters allowed healthy and influential townspeople the right to make their own laws. Over time, this new decision-making process changed the feudal system. And this is an example of a charter. This one is from Bedford, England, and it outlined certain rights. With a growing economy, a banking system began to develop. The increasingly wealthy churches and towns created schools called universities. Places such as Oxford and Cambridge in England and Paris and France became important centers of learning. And this is construction on the chapel at Oxford University's Merton College began in the 1200s. It was not long before many European towns and cities became terribly overcrowded. People lived in small houses crowded together. The towns and cities were also disease ridden. Rats scurrying about helped spread disease. Unless you lived in a castle, you did not have a toilet inside your home. Instead, people used chamber pots and threw the contents into the streets. And this is a picture of a rat with the caption saying, Rats spread disease in towns. Local water supplies polluted with the waste that was discarded daily carried disease. Sickness and disease were common. The Black Death spread easily in such conditions. As they did in the countryside, people in towns cooked on small fires inside their homes. Fires frequently broke out and were difficult to control. Townspeople were required to keep buckets of water outside their homes just in case. Fires spread quickly in medieval towns. Many, many middle-aged towns were walled. People entering or leaving did so through gates. Often a toll or fee was charged to enter a town. A toll collector stood at the gate to collect the fee. The tolls were either paid in money or in goods. Gates were designed to keep criminals out or, if necessary, to lock criminals in so that they could be caught. There was no organized police force, but instead there were watchmen. Any member of the public could be asked to help catch an escaping criminal. The town gates were locked at night when the curfew bell sounded. This gate leads into the town of Basulu, Bas Basalu, Spain, built in the 1100s. Originally, curfew bells rang to inform those in the taverns that it was time to leave. However, they soon became a signal to everyone that it was time to go home. If you were an apprentice craftsman, just like the boys who go off to train to be knights, you too are sent away at an early age. Your family arranges your training. You must live in the home of a master or highly skilled craftsman. It is unlikely that you will return home again during your apprenticeship years. And this is a picture of an apprentice blacksmith assisting his master. Your training will take many years to complete. You will not receive payment for any of the work you do. During this time, you are part of your master's household. You live in his home or shop. You usually eat with his family. Your new family provides the clothes you wear, even if you are homesick or sad, you have to obey your master. This is a journeyman blacksmith, continued to work for his master. After a spe specified period of time, you advance from being an apprentice to becoming a journeyman. As a journeyman, you are paid by your master each day for your work. Usually you continue to work for your master as an employee. After several years as an employee, you might take the next step in your career. You might be ready to submit a piece of your best work called your masterpiece to the guild for approval. If the guild accepts your work, you finally become a master craftsman. You might even be able to open your own shop with your name above the door. A master blacksmith might open his own shop. Women in the Middle Ages. Women in the Middle Ages had few legal rights. However, a small number of women in positions of power had significant influence. For example, women who became queens were often in a position to advise their husbands and sons, the kings and princes. A lord's widow who did not have sons could manage her deceased husband's land and make important decisions. Women could become skilled in a particular craft, and some trained to be merchants. 
Other women joined the church and became nuns. Many women worked alongside their husbands in the fields. Regardless of whether they were part of the privileged class or were serfs, as important members of their households, women's man women managed their family's daily needs. Two interesting women from this time period were Empress Matilda and Abbess Hildegard of Bingen. Empress Matilda lived during the 1100s and was the daughter of King Henry I of England. She was involved in leading an army against an English king. She escaped capture and went to France. She was also the mother of King Henry II of England. And this is Empress Matilda, daughter of Henry I of England. Abbess Hildegard was a writer and composer who lived during the 1100s. She wrote about many different subjects, including philosophy, science, and medicine. She also developed an alternative English alphabet. And this is a picture of Abbess Hildegard of Bingen. Okay, remember, go back into the text. Use your vocabulary to find the answers. Number one. People mostly lived on manors early in the Middle Ages. Where did they move between 1000 CE and 1300 CE? Number two is true or false. Trade was important in creating more jobs during the Middle Ages. Number three, the blank class became more important as people became involved in trade. Number four, true or false. Lords did not benefit from the craftsmen and merchants. Number five, which was not a problem with living conditions in towns in the Middle Ages. Six, which choice shows the correct order one takes to become a master craftsman? Seven, true or false, all women in the Middle Ages took care of their families. And number eight, which quote from the text supports this answer? So whether you said true or false, which one of those supports that? And number nine, which was a positive effect of living in towns during the Middle Ages. All right, that is all for today. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. Bye, Adams.